Hello again, everyone, and thanks for joining us for this Saturday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm Dave Percy, meteorologist with the National Weather Service, and I'll be hosting today's show. Up first, hazardous weather graphic, uh, yellow signifying advisories, weather advisories, and in the case of the uh, Alaska range here, that's a wind advisory, which uh, remains out through noon Sunday tomorrow, and that's for southerly winds gusting to 65 miles an hour. Uh, at times all along the range there and actually even into the uh, <clears throat> uh, Cuscombe Valley there, but that's mostly east of McGrath. And then we've got winter weather advisories out uh, through uh, tomorrow and tomorrow night here from the lower Yukon Valley northward here across the greater Galena area into the Kobuk Valley and then back out uh, along the northwest coast, Kotzebue, Selawik, Kivalina, Noatak, Red Dog and those areas. That's for uh, winds gusting 40, 50 miles an hour with uh, snow, occasionally reducing visibility to less than half a mile at times. That's out through uh, actually tomorrow night. And then winter or a winter storm warning out for the uh, St. Lawrence Island area up to the Bering Strait coast. That's out uh, through Monday for uh, 50 to 60 mile per hour winds out of the northeast with uh, several inches of snow falling each day. And that'll result in whiteout conditions at times there. And again, that's out uh, through Monday into the afternoon. And then there's a high wind warning here for the uh, greater Anchorage area, uh, turning an arm and the Anchorage hillside for, uh, that's out until 6 a.m. tomorrow morning. That's for winds to gusts possibly as high as 80 miles per hour. On satellite, you can see the uh, big storm out here to the west, <clears throat> actually pulling up to the northeast here. And this system holding together much better than the ones for the last uh, month or so have as they moved in with a fair amount of rainfall falling about just under an inch moving across Kodiak Island today and uh, half an inch to uh, two inches falling, the half an inch falling at Seward while two inches or more fell at Portage today. And Portage seen winds gusting to 75 miles per hour and that extending on down to uh, Turnigan Arm at McHugh Creek, also 75 mile an hour wind gusts with Potter's Marsh seeing 65 mile per hour winds at this point in the afternoon. Otherwise, you can see uh, the system pushing northeastward pretty well and uh, big high that we've had over the panhandle and uh, Canada, that's getting shoved off into Canada. You can see remnants of a frontal boundary here bringing some uh, moisture into the central coast and northward increasing uh, Precipitation, definitely increasing the uh, clouds along with precipitation this afternoon. And that's going to be slow to move. In fact, this system here is going to overrun it. And uh, so the rain that started there is probably going to last for a while. Otherwise, back behind, we've got cold air coming southwestward and then swinging around to the uh, southeast here around the main low center pulling up. And over time, that flow is going to continue and become a little more north to south. And that's going to actually tonight drop the snowfall levels down to sea level from the Perloffs into the eastern Aleutians and the Alaska Peninsula, as well as Bristol Bay. Otherwise, on the uh, chart today, you can see the colder air up here over St. Lawrence Island, the Bering Strait areas with the gusty winds and snow, seeing uh, blizzard conditions there from Gamble and Savunga up into uh, Wales and Tin City. Winds, uh, a less snow uh, really around Unicleet, uh, but winds still gusting 40 to 45 miles per hour and uh, fairly strong in advance of this front. As I mentioned, uh, 70 or more mile per hour wind gusts along the Western Alaska Range were recorded at Sparavon. And then we've got uh, gusty southwest winds here on the south side of this low center increasing today and tonight as it continues to pull slowly northward and you get into that tighter gradient there and also here the strong winds associated with this tight pressure field over south central Alaska. Precipitation again upslope areas southern Kenai Peninsula, western Prince William Sound but also uh, precipitation recorded at Valdez and over to Cordova today as well as I mentioned the northern panhandle. 
generally dry, you can see the uh, downsloping wind flow, the uh, making the clouds go away here on the north side of the Alaska Range in the Tanah Valley and over the 40 mile country up toward Eagle. And then just some uh, areas of light snow here along this uh, boundary from the uh, Bering Strait up to the uh, eastern Arctic coast. And for tonight, that's going to continue, kind of hang in that area there. Uh, looks like dead horse maybe over toward uh, Wainwright, chance of snow, light snow at times tonight. And then these uh, gusty east winds, stronger, that's actually going to uh, maybe break the clouds out a little bit here over the uh, Kobuk Valley on out uh, into the Chukchi Sea. But uh, snow and blowing snow, winter storm warnings tonight from the Bering Strait to St. Lawrence Island. And that pattern shifting southward and eastward a little bit here. You can see uh, precipitation, mixed precipitation now over the Alaska Peninsula and the colder air behind this trough will eventually sweep eastward on tomorrow, but rain continues at times here for Kodiak Island. General area of rain all the way up uh, to this uh, upper trough that's pushing this front eastward. So moderate amounts of rainfall here will develop over the northern panhandle tonight. Uh, should stay dry to the south though, and not much precipitation of this frontal boundary as it pushes northeast, north of the Alaska Range. It's all backed up along the mountains and to the south. And taking a look at Forecast for Sunday, this front pushes through, but the strong southwest flow keeps uh, moderate amounts of rain, moderate to possibly heavy at times. Heavy rain probably be in advance of the front, more of a moderate continuous rain behind it, right into off the coast. Rain and snow showers, north Gulf Coast, uh, maybe south central Alaska. Lighter winds here uh, tomorrow for southwest Al or for south central Alaska. And uh, winds light up in the Tanah Valley with partly sunny skies in the afternoon. Maybe some snow showers kicked off, especially as that front approaches the uh, southern slopes of the Brooks Range there. But the stronger winds and areas of snow, again, winter storm warnings continue tomorrow into Monday, St. Lawrence Island, the Bering Strait Coast. And now uh, cold air plunging the snow southeastward here into the eastern Aleutians, Alaska Peninsula. Quite an area of snow here, actually, from the southwest interior across Bristol Bay all the way out to Nikolsky and then back up across the Perbolos and on up into the Bering Strait, and then a break and then a comparatively quite weak system there, bringing some moisture into the far western Aleutians. And on Monday, that uh, tracks eastward here, right along the Aleutian chain, while the former low weakens and moves up into the uh, Yukon Delta area toward eastern Norton Sound. And uh, cold air, bona fide Arctic air behind this front is going to plunge southward on those gusty northeast winds here coming into the northern Bering Sea. Look for periods of snow over southwest Alaska, northward into the uh, Kobuk, Selawik Valley's northwest coast. Very strong winds gusting 50 to 65 miles an hour here along the northwest coast there, Kivalina, on up to Point Hope, Cape Lisbon, and a tight gradient along the Brooks Range. Look for uh, snow and blowing snow there uh, with the frontal boundary and winds could gust as high as 40 to 50 miles an hour through the passes of the mountains there, but it'd be much lighter over the Alaska Range and the Panhandle, more showery. Lows tonight in the 30s, lower 40s that way, mid to upper 30s here in the southwest, near 30 south central Alaska, single numbers up along the Arctic coast, actually a little below zero on the central and western side. Highs tomorrow staying below zero over much of the Arctic coast to near 40 here south central Alaska, lower 40s Alaska Peninsula, mid 40s for the Panhandle, and the lows on Monday morning. 35 to 40 for the southeast coast, 10 to 15 below for the Arctic coast, and mid-30s there for Bristol Bay, upper 20s, south central Alaska. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. A lot of IFR here, uh, central eastern Bering Sea, pushing into the southwest coast all the way up to the western Seward Peninsula for Sunday morning. Uh, still some VFR here in the central interior, otherwise marginal up across Koyukuk Valley, Brooks Range, IFR, North Slope Arctic Coast, IFR uh, pretty solid in along the uh, Kenai Peninsula, Prince William Sound, and right on into the Panhandle, IFR, Central Eastern Aleutians, the Alaska Peninsula. And for the afternoon, IFR here all across southeast coast with strong southwest flow pushing that moisture in and staying IFR North Gulf Coast, Prince William Sound. Bringing out the VFR, Northern Cook Inlet, Manuska Valley, part of the Sitna Valley, and even Sitna Valley looking good with the IFR staying uh, on either on the eastern slopes of the uh, 
Western Alaska Range, or back from the Kuskokwim Mountains out to the southwest coast and into the Bering and some IFR in North Slope to the eastern coast. And then for Monday morning, that expands south of the Brooks Range there into the upper Yukon Valley and marginal over the eastern and southeast interior. IFR, most of the Panhandle. IFR still, Prince William Sound across the Kenai Peninsula. And once you get along and west of the Alaska Range, it's a solid VFR out to St. Lawrence Island to Makoriak and marginal for the Pribilofs. And just a narrow band with that uh, Bering Sea front out there of IFR in the Aleutians. And for the afternoon, that pushes eastward there toward Nikolsky and eventually into Dutch Harbor and quite, can't quite get up to the Pribilofs. IFR here, Brooks Range and either side and over the Yukon and lower Yukon River Valley areas. Susitna Valley, Talkeetnas, right into northern uh, Prince William Sound. IFR extends right into the northern Panhandle and down the east side toward Dixon Entrance. Passes tomorrow, and Anatubic Marginal turning toward IFR in the afternoon, uh, late in the afternoon. That same trend for Adigan will be slow to go IFR if it does at all. And for Lake Clark and Merrill, Marshall VFR, IFR likely on both uh, eastern entrances. And for Rainy, eastern approach IFR, otherwise marginal. And for the uh, Windy Pass, possibly at times, Marshall VFR, south entrance, uh, otherwise pretty good VFR flying there. Isabel, occasionally marginal. Mintasta, go back to VFR. And for Tanita, uh, possible marginal VFR eastern entrance, otherwise a VFR day that uh, definitely probably lose the marginal even on the east side in the afternoon. And for Portage, IFR, Chilkoot and White, IFR. Freezing levels at the surface, again, up along the coastline, on down across the panhandle, 2,000 feet just to the southwest there, and uh, well south of the Aleutians here over the Bering Sea southward. And for icing, uh, again, the bulk of the moisture with the strongest jet flowing right up into the southeast coast, kind of back into the North Gulf Coast there. So that's where we'll see the considerable moderate areas of here. Uh, pushing through, starting to diminish in the afternoon from west, southwest to north, northeast. But uh, some lingering isolated moderate back to the west and southwest here, Kodiak Island to Bristol Bay, and also the disturbance up there over the Arctic coast and north slope. Uh, quite light there, though. And for the uh, jet stream, you can see uh, upper trough here coming right up into the southwest coast tomorrow. The upper ridge has crashed and gotten shoved into uh, Canada, so that's gone, and we've got a strong southwest jet, 130 knots, right into the southeast coast. Arctic jet up here might uh, bring a little colder air into the North Slope Arctic coastal areas uh, for a day, and about 100 knots out over the and south of the Aleutians. 9,000 feet, that low tracks right up to the Yukon Delta. Oh, uh, 20 to 35 knot winds here, 25 Bristol Bay, 40 to 50 knots across the Aleutians, 45 knots there, across the Perbloffs and easterlies 10 to 15, Brooks Range of the Arctic Coast, and southwest uh, 20 to 35 for the Panhandle. 3,000 feet, same flow here, southwest and northeast, uh, 25 knots into the southeast coast, 40 around Kodiak, and northwest 40 uh, eastern Aleutians, 50 knots for the Perbloffs, lighter out west easterlies and northeast, 35 to 40 right down into the northern Bering Sea. Much lighter winds here over toward the eastern border, uh, just 10 to 15 knots there, south 25 to 30 into south central Alaska. Turbulence, widespread moderate chop here uh, nor along the northwest coast, Kuskokwim Valley, or the uh, Chukchi Sea, Kodiak Island, all the Aleutians, Alaska Peninsula, pretty bumpy also for the panhandle. And after the break, I will return with a look at the marine forecasts. Welcome back to another edition of Alaska Weather Facts. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder. As you well know, you can get forecast information for any day of the week. Today, tonight, tomorrow, out to six or seven days. It includes the high and low temperature, the wind direction, the chance of rain or snow in your part of Alaska. But did you know that there is information available to forecast out to two weeks? So the question is, how would you use that information? And here to answer that question today and tell us a lot more about climate services from the U.S. National Weather Service Alaska region is Rick Toman. He's the program manager for the Climate Science and Services. And uh, Rick, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Dave. How would we use information that is out to two weeks instead of just the high and low and the chance of rain? 
Well, Dave, as we move out in time, of course, uh, forecasts become more uncertain. So as we move into that second week from now, we're not looking at specific uh, highs or lows or precipitation amounts at any given place. Uh, what we can do with the state of the science at this point is get a handle on patterns. Uh, so we can uh, say things like um, increased chances for uh, stormy weather in the Bering Sea uh, in two weeks, or we've been in a cold weather pattern, looks like uh, eight to 10 days from now, that pattern's going to change. Those are the kind of forecasts uh, that we can currently make in that second week. So you're increasing lead time for perhaps big or small weather events and telling us the likelihood of uh, maybe uh, more coastal storms or wind events in some areas? Uh, those are the kinds of things that, um, that we hope to be able to, to let Alaskans know in the, in the second week forecast. And if you have an activity or an event that you would find that kind of advance notice useful, whether it's moving stuff off of the beach, whether to go out hunting or to come back from camp, those kind of decisions, the week two uh, provides uh, the opportunity uh, for you to get a handle on that kind of information. Okay, what other type of weather impacts that we're familiar with might Alaskans use climate services for? Well, in the forecast realm, we can go uh, provide some information from this uh, week two, say the eight to 14 day period, uh, on out uh, to the uh, monthly and even seasonal time scale. Now those monthly seasonal forecasts are still kind of uh, just really very much pattern dependent and the amount of detail that we can provide at this point is still uh, pretty limited generally uh, indications of how temperature and precipitation will fall in, in uh, maybe above normal, below normal kind of range. Uh, but in the week two period, uh, we can uh, be considerably more specific than that as far as the general patterns and the really the impacts on Alaskans. Okay, so we would be talking about generalizations there that would, would tell us that the, the period might be more stormy, might be more hot, more dry, more cold, and th situations like that. That's correct. So we're not going to be able to say in which community, uh, for instance, there's the threat of coastal flooding, but we can, we'll, can often be able to tell we're moving into a pattern that would be conducive to big Bering Sea storms. So if you're in an area that that could potentially uh, impact you, you'll want to pay attention uh, to uh, the weather forecast. Okay. Now every day and every hour of the day, the National Weather Service is working on a forecast for the next day. But how do you start your forecast process for that extended period that goes out beyond seven days? Well, the way things work right now, we start off with the expected general flow pattern uh, for Alaska and, and the whole world, really. We, and then we narrow that down to Alaska. So we start off with the basic computer model forecast. There's uh, quite a few different computer models that we look at, bring those together. And then another important part of that is we as attempt to assess the confidence. Um, the reality is often two weeks away, the computer models are very divergent. They have lots of different solutions. And that's an indication that we don't have much confidence. Uh, but when we see uh, more agreement in that time frame, and when that agreement is a pattern that will be potentially very impactful for Alaska or is a big change from what we've been in, that's when we can then take that expected pattern. We have computer models forecasting it. We've assessed the confidence. Now we can move that forward. How, using our experience as Alaskan weather forecasters, how does that uh, typically play out for Alaska? So is this a stormy pattern for the Bering Sea? Is this an extra rainy period for Southeast? Is this the kind of pattern that generates uh, strong winds potentially in, in the Anchorage Bowl? Is this a deep cold pattern for the interior? All of those are the kind of things that we're looking at in these large scale patterns. That's very different than telling you that the winds on 10 days from now are gonna be gusting to 120 on the hillside. We're looking for patterns not, um, not the very specific information that the Weather Service will then hone in on as the event gets closer. So the idea is to keep the five, six, seven day forecast the same where you are getting the standard high and low temperature and the chance of wind or rain, but further out you get a broad general forecast, but as the time gets closer to that event, we'll get a lot more specific. 
That's yeah. correct. Okay, very good. So how can people use this information if I am out in the bush and I want to see is a coastal storm expected in my region or is a chance for that improving over the next uh, two to three weeks? Where could I go to get information like that? When we see that uh, potentially impactful or a big change in the weather is coming uh, eight to 14 days out, uh, typically we will uh, start to highlight that on uh, the Weather Service Facebook site. Um, we might produce a YouTube video uh, highlighting that, linking that on our Facebook site. Um, so often we don't, at this point, we don't have much to say in that because we're really looking for those forecasts of opportunities. But one thing we can say very likely as uh, we go through the next uh, two or three years, there'll be more and more of this kind of forecast information available in that week two time frame. Okay, and something that emergency managers and city planners and uh, folks in villages might be interested in keeping an eye out for, uh, looking for that information to be headlined, uh, whether that's on social media or perhaps uh, through uh, uh, the National Weather Service channels there to get information from, like, uh, from you to make better plans a little bit uh, longer term and make uh, better preparations in the event that things become a little bit more unsettled. Uh, absolutely. Uh, uh, Climate Services uh, with the National Weather Service Alaska region is talking to uh, the state of Alaska every week, uh, apprising them of uh, that uh, two-week outlook. And, um, and uh, on the social media side, uh, we uh, are working to uh, keep Alaskans informed so that when we think we have uh, some confidence in a high impact or a big change, mm -hmm. to uh, that's the best way right now for folks to uh, find out about that. Uh, Twitter, uh, Facebook, so uh, uh, stay tuned to uh, your National Weather Service. Very good, a developing program. Rick Toman with the National Weather Service Alaska Region. He's a Climate Science and Services Program Manager. Thanks so much for joining us again, Rick, and I hope to have you back again soon. Great, thanks, Dave. For another edition of Alaska Weather Facts, I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder. We'll see you next time. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Today's sea ice analysis showing an increase now again here coming south through through the Bering Strait in and around St. Lawrence Island now with those uh, colder northeast winds blowing this stuff southward. And that's going to continue and probably accelerate to, during the upcoming week here as even a colder air mass drops into the northern Bering Sea here through the Bering Strait uh, on Monday. <laughs> And for the coastal water forecast, ahead of the front, uh, near storm force winds uh, early on here for the south coast, 45 knots gales. All of the inside waters from the south-southeast, 35 knots, 7 to 10 foot seas. And south 40 knots here diminished back to 25 knots from the southwest again uh, behind the front there on the extreme north coast. Then on Monday, lighter winds in store for the all areas here, south 20 knots, central and southern inside waters, Lynn Canal south 25. And southwest 20 along the coast with those still, seas still running right around 20 feet. And for Prince William Sound, 20 knot winds, but seas only 4 feet there tomorrow. South 20 with 17 foot seas for the eastern north Gulf Coast. Winds gradually increase up to 30 knots for the Barren Islands as you head west here. And seas increase to 16 feet. South 30, Kamishak Bay. Southeast 25, Southern Cook Inlet. East 15, Northern Cook Inlet. And for Monday, south to southwest, 25 knots for all of the inlet there. West 25, Kamishak Bay, increased to about 30 knots there. Pirate gusts for the Barrens, back down to 25 on the western North Gulf Coast and out toward Middleton Island, south of 20 knots. Southeast 20 for Prince William Sound. And for Kodiak Island, southwest, 30 to 35 knots, about sums it up there. But from uh, Sitkanak on down to Cape Sarachev, southwest 40 knots, pretty good fetch there. So seas approaching 30 feet here as you get up towards Sitkanak. West 35 there for the uh, <clears throat> north side of the peninsula. And then that turns southwest at 30 into Bristol Bay. <clears throat> and for Monday, west southwest 35 knot gales here for the Alaska Peninsula of 18 to 20 foot seas. West 30 knots, Bristol Bay, that goes right across the Aleutian Range into Shelikoff Strait, turning southwest up the east side of Kodiak. And for tomorrow, Fox Islands, west-northwest, 35 to 40 knots, so some good gales there, seas uh, 20 to 28 feet. Northwest 30 to 40 knots, central Aleutians, and west 25 to 30 for the western areas. 
and then uh, 25 or so here for the far western Aleutians, Kiska to at 2 on Monday, turning north at 30, and then kind of a variable direction of 25 knots from northeast to west here across the adak atka area, and uh, southwest 30 knots from Alaska Island, and uh, kind of squirrely here for out toward Unmak Island. <laughs> And for the southwest coast, uh, lighter winds, not much gradient there tomorrow, so 15 to 20 knot winds here. But gales, St. Matthew Island, northwest 40 for the Perbolos, north 40 for St. Lawrence Island, 12 foot seas. And then on Monday, north 40 knots continue there for St. Lawrence Island and north to northwest 25 to 30 here north of Nunavik Island. St. Matthew Island, westerlies 25 for the Perbolos, but 35 knots south of, uh, of uh, Nunavik Island there with 15 foot seas. And from uh, Sunday, northeast, 25 to 30 knots there. So brisk wind advisory, central and east side. Gales on the west side and 40 knot winds from Cape Beaufort all the way down to Wales. And that holds right through Monday, those strong north to northeast winds there. Uh, coming down a tad there, 35 knots, or down to 30 knots here for the uh, west side. And brisk wind advisories, 25 knot winds north northeast release continue for the central and eastern coastline. For tonight, again, this strong storm uh, lifting northward. You can see not much of a gradient around the center, so winds will be lightening up here, especially with this front pushing rapidly off to the east-northeast. And uh, winds warning out for Anchorage, and the, or the Anchorage hillside turning an arm until 6 a.m. on Sunday, but it may come down sooner than that. By tomorrow afternoon, definitely lighter winds. And wind, rain, possibly heavy at times, shifts into the central and northern southeast coast. Snow and blowing snow, winter storm warnings continue there. St. Lawrence Island up into the Bering Strait uh, through Monday, actually. And moving it along here, this low tracks into the southwest interior. Snow and snow and blowing snow to the northwest. Uh, not too bad in the Tanana Valley, wet in the Panhandle. And then for uh, Monday, snow over the west, west side here, up along this boundary with areas of blowing snow and reduced visibilities. And uh, next system brings rain and snow into the eastern Aleutians and more showery over the Panhandle with uh, generally dry conditions over the Tanana Valley. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating.